chronic wasting disease, the final epidemic. There are no effective tools at this point in time to manage the disease. There's not a lot we can do except studies like this. Have you ever noticed suspicious activity within your deer herd? I'm talking the real life walking dead. Chronic wasting disease, or CWD as it's most widely recognized, could be the culprit. I'm Matt Drury, and this is another edition of DOD TV. This segment of DOD TV is brought to you by Analogics Outdoors. Know the product, use the product, get results. One of the best things we can do as outdoors men and women is become educated on the threats to our deer herds. Recently, in the last few weeks, we've kind of heard more and more about CWD due to a couple people within the media talking about it. Well, I think that's a good thing because it's opening up a whole new discussion on this terrible disease. Back in the winter of 2012, our DOD camera crews followed a leading group of scientists into the frozen hills of Wyoming. Guiding some rather daring studies, these group of scientists were able to find out some pretty interesting intel. Why don't you check it out? CWD is a prion disease of North American deer, elk, and moose. Many hunters have remarked that even in areas where there's a high prevalence of CWD, they do not see sick animals. This is a function of the disease itself. Chronic wasting disease has an exceptionally long incubation period, probably on average between 18 and 24 months. Deer only show clinical signs of disease at the very end of that incubation period. Chronic wasting disease is contagious. It moves freely, laterally amongst deer populations. One of the biggest unanswered questions with regard to CWD is just what will CWD do at the population level when prevalence gets high enough? To study that further, we'll now take a look at the South Converse Unit, or Hunt Area 65, in the state of Wyoming, where we have a long-term CWD project underway in cooperation with Wyoming Game and Fish Department and the University of Wyoming. Chronic wasting disease, or we call it CWD, um, is a disease of the deer family. It's an insidious, uh, progressive, slowly spreading disease that really there's not a lot we can do except studies like this. This particular deer herd has the highest prevalence of chronic wasting disease measured in any wild deer herd on the planet. In the last 10 years, this mule deer population has um, literally been cut in half. One out of every two deer out here conceivably could have CWD. Why this area has such a higher prevalence than others, just not sure. I'm a PhD student at the University of Wyoming. Is that new animal a doe or buck? So the title of this project is The Epidemiology of Chronic Wasting Disease in Mule Deer in the Endemic Area of Wyoming. We don't want to release deer that have lacerations or anything. If you think it's abnormal, just tell us. What was this last pulse before that? Oh, I mean, All right, 27. Yes. Look for 27. Look for 27. I am the principal investigator, so I'm the lead scientist on this project and uh, I advise Malia, who's the graduate student doing the work out here on the field. She's working on her PhD. We would like you to spend just a little more time looking for deer number 2727. I'm the wildlife management coordinator for the Casper region for the Wyoming Game Fish Department. The CWD progresses in an animal. It essentially, um, it, it basically pokes holes in their brain, it turns the brain into kind of like a sponge. and so motor skills um, deteriorate, behavioral changes. The deer become oh, lethargic and depressed and unaware of their surroundings. These deer look like they're wasting away. They're, they're very skinny. You can pretty much see every rib in their body. It's a disease similar to, but not the same as what people call mad cow disease. White-tailed deer are susceptible, mule deer are susceptible, elk are susceptible, and we've even found it in moose. Our current study in Wyoming may in fact be the most important research study that we have been able to fund. The results of this study will be very important to determine how management moves forward. So what we're doing is we're retesting deer that we've already captured and seeing if they have the disease. And then we're also capturing some new deer to see if they test positive for CWD. So what we do is, is we have the, the helicopter crew capture the deer using their net guns.
strain the deer and tie them up, bring them back to us. We anesthetize them with the drug combination. We take blood samples. We're gonna test them for pregnancy. We do general health screens with their blood. We then take the tonsil biopsies to test for chronic wasting disease. It's a really good tissue to test for chronic wasting disease in a live deer. We download the data from their old collars and then we wipe them blank and we put new collars back out on them and then we reverse the anesthesia that we've given them. They get up and, and run away pretty happy. It's an insidious, slowly spreading disease that really there's not a lot we can do except studies like this, get more information and then work from there. So we've had a really good two days. I think it went really well. The deer captures were very successful. What our preliminary data is showing is that mountain lion predation and chronic wasting disease are the two biggest pressures on this deer population right now. So far we've gotten about 30 percent of our does that come back positive for the disease. We radio collared 10 bucks last year and half of those came back positive. And we get asked how much is CWD going to spread and is it going to wipe out deer and elk populations? We're just really not sure. After 2002 when CWD was detected in the state of Wisconsin, surveillance efforts increased across all 50 states. In that subsequent 12 years, we have now detected CWD in 21 states, either in captive facilities, free-ranging populations, or a combination. CWD is still spreading geographically and growing in prevalence locally, but we've done a vastly better job of identifying where it is on the landscape. I think the average person can do a couple of things. Have patience, let us finish some of these research projects that are on the ground right now. Talk to and work with your game management agencies. There are situations like this where there may need to be a decline in the number of mule deer tags that hunters can get. If we want a sustainable deer population that's healthy, sometimes we're gonna have to cut back in things like the number of tags in an area like this. And, and that's already happened with this mule deer herd. We haven't harvested does for quite a while and, and this herd's just decreased at such a precipitous rate that we're, we're very, very concerned. Well, we get a lot of questions from hunters on how safe it is to consume CWD infected deer. There's no evidence to date that shows that chronic wasting disease is a direct threat to human health. The Centers for Disease Control demonstrated absolutely positively that humans can either get CWD or cannot get CWD, so it's still unknown. Having said that, whatever human risk there is, is extremely minute. If hunters are interested in having their deer or elk tested for CWD, they need to contact the state natural resource agency in the state where they're hunting. Nearly every state can accommodate or help hunters identify how to get their deer tested for chronic wasting disease. There is no cure still. There's no treatment for it still. There are actually people starting to think that maybe someday there'll be something like a vaccine for it. Hopefully these does can replace themselves in the population at a much higher rate before they eventually succumb to the disease. We can do very little about the deer to deer movement of disease, but the human assisted is where regulatory efforts and educational efforts can have their greatest impact. Probably the biggest risk of, of disease spreading is the inadvertent movement of infectious materials or carcasses by hunters. If you are hunting in an area where CWD is known to exist, check the rules and regulations of your home state or locale to determine what is safe to bring back home. If by chance you have killed a CWD positive animal and brought it back to your home state, you should make every effort to appropriately discard of those materials. Do not allow those materials to end up out on the landscape where healthy deer in your area could come across them and become infected with this disease. If hunters are truly interested in the long-term health of deer resources, they may have to accept short-term consequences of population reduction for the sake of disease management. One of the benefits of attempting to hold CWD in check today is that if we get better tools to deal with disease in the future, things like vaccines, the smaller the area and the fewer the number of CWD positive deer, the more likely we'll be able to be successful with advanced management tools. What incredible footage. Would you be able to jump out of a helicopter onto a moving target like a mule deer? I don't know about you, but I feel pretty safe on the ground. Remember, the best thing we can do as outdoors people is stay educated on what's happening with our deer herd, EHD 
hoof rot, CWD. So hopefully today, you've learned just a little bit more on the disease we call chronic wasting. Please help us educate fellow hunters, and why don't you share this video and let's get the word out. Thanks for watching another edition of DOD TV. We'll see you next week.